that accept everything. That's a harder recursive set. It takes a little longer to do, but it's completely decidable. You can read a finite state machine, minimize it, see if it equals the single state machine that accepts everything, answer yes or no appropriately. Those are recursive sets. What's an example of a recursively enumerable set? CFGs that do not accept sigma star. That's a recursively enumerable set. How do I write a recognizer for context-free grammars that don't accept everything, that don't generate everything? I'll write CFLs so I don't have to say generate. CFLs that don't accept everything. How do you do that? What's the brute force thing to try? Try every single string. Try every single string. Try strings from the empty string and then the next biggest string and the next biggest string. List the strings in lexicographic order and size order and try them all to see if the CFL accepts them. Is there a way to check whether a CFL accepts a certain string? That's the membership algorithm. That's what compilers do. That's the CYK algorithm. It's Early's algorithm. There's lots of different algorithms to do it. That's what compilers do. We can always decide, given a string in a CFL, yes or no, does the CFL accept it? So we'll do EJ's idea and we'll generate the strings in size order. We'll run each one through our membership checker. And if they keep accepting, we just keep going. If the CFL doesn't accept everything, sooner or later we'll get to the string that it doesn't accept. And at that point, the answer will say no. And we'll stop and say, yes, this CFL does not accept everything. So EJ's idea is fine. We can just go ahead and list them in order and check membership for each one. Can you call something recursively enumerable regardless of which one eventually returns, whether it's the yes, the true, or the false? Or do you have to like, take the complement of it? It's the second thing you said, and it's a little bit of a technicality. But, but recursively enumerable, we're always talking about the yes answer being important. It's an arbitrary focus, but the yes answer is what determines the set. So this is the set of all CFLs that don't accept everything. There is a way to recognize these, to say yes when the answer is yes. But let's do just what you ask. What about the complement of this? That is the CFLs that generate everything. Can you write something to recognize these? Something that will eventually say yes. If you could, we would have two sets, one of which is the complement of the other, both of which were recursively enumerable. If we could do this, then this would be a recursive set. This would be something we can answer. And you should remember from what I showed you a couple days ago in reductions that this is an undecidable problem. I mean, it can't be done recursively. So the opposite of this, there's no way to do. This is something which is not recursively enumerable. You can't even answer yes when the answer is yes. I give you a context-free language. You can chug along all you want, and you will never, ever be able to tell me yes for sure if it accepts everything. The best you can do is try every single string one at a time. And after you've tried the first two trillion strings and they're all accepted, then you're just as close to the infinite number you have to check as you were when you started. Right? And you can leave a legacy to your grandchildren and great-grandchildren. They can keep doing it. And 2,000 years down the line, you're still just as close to the infinity that you have to check as you started. You're really getting nowhere. And there's no better way to do it. That's what this proof of this really would mean. That there's no way to do it. Not just because we can't think of a way, but there's really no way. So there's an example of a set which is undecidable and its complement which is not even partially decidable, which is not recursively enumerable. Turing machines that halt on a specific input. In other words, I give you a Turing machine, I give you a particular input, I want to know, does this Turing machine eventually stop on this input or does it go into an infinite loop? 
I give you two inputs, Turing machine and, in, and, a, and a string. Does the Turing machine stop, yes or no? I want to know the status of A and A factorial. Not decidable. I mean, I mean recursively enumerable? So A is recursively enumerable. Why, Joe? Why can you? No, no, not recursively. Not recursively enumerable? You think it is? Well, what do you think? We got a vote here. If you think it is, give me a way you would do it. How would you recognize strings that represent Turing machines and inputs where the Turing machine stops on that input? What would you do? Right. Use your universal Turing machine to start it up. Then what? Let it go. If it actually ends up stopping, you stop and say, yes. And then, if you do that, you'd know for sure that the Turing machine halted on a particular input. But what if it runs forever? You can't say it might not stop, but you can say if it does stop. So this, we say, is recursively enumerable. And what about its complement? Things that don't halt on a, on a specific input, things that definitely go into an infinite loop, that we have no way to check. And that's not recursively enumerable. Keep in mind, I haven't proved any of these are true. I'm just working in with intuition. I want you to be able to guess the right thing. All right, let's do another example. A equals Turing machines that halt on every input you might ever give them. Okay, so now I just give you a Turing machine and I want to know, is this safe on all the inputs? Will this always stop? Always say yes or no. This is another way to ask, I'm giving you a Turing machine. Does it re represent a recursive language? It's another way to ask this question. But, you know, does it stop on every input? What do you think? Can you recognize things like this? Well, but you'd have to give it every input to know that it halts on every input. On a particular input, you can just wait until it sooner or later stops. If it stops, you're guaranteed to know that. But if you want to check that it halts on every input, how would you ever know that? Even if you let it run forever, you wouldn't know that. Uh, Chris, you had a yeah. So what do you think? This is, is it recursively enumerable or not recursively enumerable? Yeah? What do you think, Tony? Either yeah. it halts on the first input or it doesn't. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> well, we could do this kind of trick. I, 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 could, I could take all the inputs, like, like, like EJ said, in, uh, in size order. And I'll run the, f the, the first string for one step. And then I'll start the next string going. And I'll run that for one step. And then I'll run the first string for a second step. And then the next time, I'll start the third string going. And I'll run the second string for one more step. And I'll run the first string for a third step. Everybody see what I'm doing? I'm starting all the inputs at that. So they're all running at the same time. A huge time sharing system. By the time I'm on the 50th string, the first string has done 50 steps. The second string has done 49 steps. So this way, I'm running them all at the same time. Even if I do that, is there any way to check that it's going to stop on all of them? I can run it and run it and run it, and all the ones that I started can start to stop. They can all start halting, but I still won't know if it's going to halt on all of them until I go forever. So as far as we can tell, this is not recursively enumerable. And what about its complement? You're thinking about the complement. Let's think about the complement. Turing machines that don't halt on every input. That means the complement of this means that there's one input that it for sure doesn't halt on, right? How do you find if there's one input that for sure it infinite loops on? You try all the strings, and you wait till you get to the one that infinite loops. It doesn't work. 